Hi, this is Pastor Daryl Myatt coming to you from the Wichita Mountains of Oklahoma. Today is Thursday, February 2nd, 2023. This channel is all about world news, Bible prophecy, end time events, and the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please forgive me, it's really difficult for me these days to be able to put a message together. Um, long days at the cafe, helping a friend remodel a house. Uh, I'll soon be building some greenhouses and a shed and covering a patio. Lots of lots of creative construction stuff. So forgive me. Uh, I, I think this is the most important work that I do. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to talk today about some of the things going on in the world. It's it, it's hard to watch the news without kind of grabbing this and going, oh, wait a minute, that, that was in here 2,000 years ago. Uh, <laughs> it's it's kind of strange. It, you know, um, the World Economic Forum meeting in Davos recently said that world government is here to stay and that deglobalization is some kind of mirage. You know, one world government is part of end time events. It's part of what the Bible says will happen prior to the return of Christ. Uh, Daniel speaks of it. Revelation speaks of it. In fact, if you study either of those books, you kind of have to study the other one alongside with it because they almost go hand in hand. Um, there was a speaker, a CEO of a German tech company, said the world is entering into the next phase of globalization. Uh, they're pushing their one world agenda, their one world government. Uh, they want to transfer transform it into a one world government by 2030 or sooner. Um, but you know, acting like one world government is here to stay is very arrogant, prideful, egotistical. According to what God says in his word, uh, he will allow these globalists to have their godless one world government for seven years, and then he'll destroy it when Christ returns. Um, the head of their world government, the Antichrist, and his godless assistant, the false prophet. They'll be cast alive into the lake of fire, Revelation 19, 20 tells us. So please understand this. The Holy Bible is his story. His story. History? Hmm. Holy Bible is his story, written in advance. God tells us what happens at the end before it ever happens? A lot of people don't believe it. A lot of people refuse it. A lot of people say, ah, it's just a Bronze Age book of mythology written by a bunch of guys. Mm, sorry, I have to disagree with you there. That's your opinion. I'm going to go with God's word because I have found it to be true every time. I have found God intervening in my life and miraculously pulling me through things that I couldn't have done on my own. I'm sorry, I have too much history with God Almighty, with Jesus answering my prayers, with so many things that have happened in my life. And as I look back, I can see the hand of God on my life through so many things, so many events. Um, God's story reveals Globalization, oh, globalization will come. Also tells us how it ends up. I mean, it is temporary. It's not here to stay. And deglobalization is not some kind of mirage. It's straight from God's word. Um, but you know, a one world government is a sure sign that the return of Christ is very near. It has to happen. It's one of those things. You know, when the disciples saw Jesus going to the cross and dying on the cross, they thought it was all over. They thought, well, now what do we do? How can we possibly go on? Because, you know, our leader, the one we followed, is dead and gone. But that had to happen in order for us to have salvation. So what they thought was a horrible event was actually a blessing from God. It's all in the way you see things. Are you looking through man's distorted view, or are you looking at things through God's eyes? You know, the Antichrist will rise over a one-world government for seven years, and then Christ comes. Globalization, don't misunderstand, it's a tool of the devil. 
You know, 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4 calls him the God of this world, who has blinded those who can't receive the glorious light of Christ. I'm sorry, I, I never want to misquote a scripture or present it in anything other than its original form. So please forgive me if I loosely translated that. Let me read it for you. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. The devil blinded them. The God of this world, the Bible calls him. But John also tells us in 1 John 4 verse 4 that greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. <laughs> so, sure, the devil might be a powerful enemy, but we follow a greater king. Um, one world government will come. He will be cast into the lake of fire. And Christ will reign as King of kings and Lord of lords for a thousand years, Revelation 20, verse 10. So we can tell that we're getting much closer to the return of Christ based on things going on. You know, Elon Musk, I, I love him or hate him, I, I kind of like the way he kind of throws darts, you know, at some of these godless world leaders and uh, some of the criticisms he throws their way. He criticized the World Economic Forum's ESG agenda you know, their environmental, social, and governance agenda that supposedly supports racial equality, abortion, and this woke culture, which is should be rightly called the blind culture because it's not woke at all. It's just blind to the truth. But he said, Musk said the S in ESG stands for satanic. Have to agree with him. He said the World Economic Forum is increasingly becoming an unelected world government that the people never asked for and don't want. And then he went to Twitter and he asked if they, if the users think the World Economic Forum should control the world, and 86% said no. <laughs> so yeah, I, I also think this World Economic Forum is satanic, the e ESG satanic. You know, their godless world government, their population reduction plans. All these things, um, so many things, still trying to divide the state of Israel, this two-state solution they're pushing. You know, Blinken uh, was just, actually, he might still be in Israel as we speak. He's pushing for this two-state solution, which is no solution for Israel. It's only a solution to further destroy Israel. Uh debunk, you know, these Palestinians, I'm sorry, these are a made-up people who didn't exist until Yasser Arafat created them, basically saying they were original occupants of this land and Israel kicked them out, farthest thing from the truth, and yet the world buys it all hook, line, and sinker. There are no Palestinians. They weren't born in a place called Palestine. The Bible is Israel's title deed to the promised land, and especially Judea and Samaria, which they're looking at giving to the Palestinians. You know, there was somebody recently, uh, who was it? Um, Israel's new public diplomacy minister launching this new international campaign to explain Israel's position and debunk Palestinian claims to the Promised Land. She said the Bible is Israel's deed to the Promised Land. Uh, Genesis 17, verses 7 through 8, verses 18 through 21. She said Israel has not occupied any territory, and there is no occupation. I get so tired of people calling it an occupation. Um, it's their land. It's their land. God will have the final say when it comes to Israel. Read Joel 3, verse 2. Um... We're seeing so many things that show us where we are. You know, this one world government's coming, this, this cashless society, this one world um, religion. And, you know, the mark of the beast. Many of you know I worked for 14 seasons at Cowboy Stadium. Um, last season I had to, had to step away because it became a three-hour drive each way. And some really long days, you know, it was about a 19-hour day for me, and I just couldn't do it. And it was on 
a Sunday, which Sunday afternoons at our cafe is the busiest time of the week, so I, I couldn't leave. Plus, I was teaching and preaching and leading, so sadly, I had to walk away from that. But Cowboy Stadium has been cashless for two years now. No cash. You know, when it first happened, I thought, ooh, this is what the world's going to look like soon. No cash. And I started thinking, you know, there's going to be people kind of working around that and dealing with each other with cash. I think it'll still happen. There will be those that barter with something else. They won't be using the beast system. Um, there will be hyperinflation. There will be a global economic collapse. Bible speaks of this, Revelation 6, verses 5 and 6. Um, I'm seeing more and more people that have obviously been turned over to a reprobate mind. Uh, there's a Minnesota representative, Sandra Feist. She said, not all students that menstruate are females. Really? You're, you're trying to tell me that men can have their periods? I'm so sorry. That's the most idiotic stuff I've ever heard. Yet this is coming from people that are elected leaders. That's a reprobate mind. I'm sorry, that is ignorance in its most blatant form. God made them male and female, period. There's not all these other sexes like most Democrats will tell you, most godless people will tell you. Um, cash is going to be going away. Central bank digital currencies seems to be stepping everything in that direction. Cash will be replaced by a computer, a digital record of everything you buy and sell. There's coming a mark soon, and without it, you can't buy or sell anything. Spoken of in Revelation 13, known as the mark of the beast. It's coming. You know, China, India, Nigeria, and the Bahamas are already using digital currency. Sweden and Japan are starting, they're getting ready to use it, and there's 114 nations on the planet exploring the use of digital currency right now. It's coming. It's coming. The Antichrist, the false prophet, will bring about this mark of the beast. They'll track everyone's purchases, everyone's selling. Hmm. So, the closer we get to cash going away, the closer we get to the return of Christ. Once again, like the disciples who saw Christ go to the cross, we're going to see a lot of things that we think are horrible, but they have to happen in order for Christ to return. It's all part of God's plan. If you just read God's word and understand that he tells us in advance the things that will happen, it kind of gives you some peace knowing, oh, this is going to happen and this is going to happen. Well, okay, when I see that happen, I won't freak out. I'll be going, thank you, Lord. We're that much closer. <laughs> There's going to be 10 kings. The, the, the world will be divided into 10 regions at the end of the age. There will be a leader over each region. The Bible calls these 10 leaders the 10 kings. And they're kind of a prelude to the Antichrist, to the rise of the Antichrist. This has been happening already. There's, there's this, this plan, and it's already happening, creating regions. Of, it's called regionalization. You can actually Google that and see what it says. You know, Nebuchadnezzar had this dream. There were ten toes on the statue in his dream. Toes are iron mixed with clay. So that's the EU plus others as a world government. Um, the EU. Interesting. There's going to be other regions, the North American Union, you know, the continent of North America. George Bush talked about that. Uh, Russia and her neighbors, China, some of their neighbors, Latin America, Arab nations, Australia, Japan, some others. It's happening. This one world agenda, one world government, it's going to happen. Um... Our freedoms in America are going to go away. They'll see to that. All these things coming upon the world. We were told it would happen. You know, erasing national sovereignty. I think that's why the world hates Trump so much, because he was trying to make America great again. 
And all the globalists, all the demons and godless people were like, No, you can't do that! They're just foaming at the mouth and cursing up a storm because Trump was promoting America. Huh. It's amazing to me. I remember as a kid being so proud to be American. I'm, I'm one of those guys who's always bought American-made products. I've had some 48, 49 cars in my life, and they've all been American-made. I don't buy imports. I'm just kind of that way. Um, I've I've had it's some of the motorcycles I've had. I've had a Yamaha. I've had a Honda. You know, so I have bought some import products. And I know these days, even by an American made, a lot of the parts are made in other places. I just like to support companies that are here in America. They call me weird. I like to support local I like to support small businesses. I I don't go to places like Starbucks. You know, I go to the little mom and pop coffee shops. They've probably got better coffee anyway. Um, and I can sit there and talk to them about Christ and the Bible without getting <laughs> kicked out. So, you know, I'm going to go with God's Word over everything. So... God's Word teaches us that these things are coming. Um, we're going we're gonna to have our freedom of, freedom of speech, our freedom of religion, our right to bear arms. It's all going to go bye-bye. It's all going to go bye-bye. So there will be those who rise up and say, yeah, no, we're going to fight against this. And I get their feelings. I, I, I get their wanting to do so, but it has to happen. A lot of us are going to feel like fighting against it. Taking up arms and saying, nope, not on our watch. But these things have to happen. I'm kind of speaking to myself as much as I'm speaking to you because, you know, I'm kind of one of those guys that's like, oh, you're going to try to take away our freedoms? Lock and load. Here we go. Stripping nations of their sovereignty. Uh, even Pope Francis talks about one world government as <clears throat> the greater good and the common good. Saying the freedom of speech, freedom of religion, the right to bear arms will not be good for people. <clears throat> Can't have any people that can defend themselves against a tyrannical government. Keep in mind, that's why Thomas Jefferson put that right to bear arms in the Constitution. So this one world government's coming. You know, if you look at the leaders of the World Economic Forum, Klaus Schwab and that uh, Noah Harari guy, he thinks he's God. He thinks the Bible and Jesus are the biggest hoax on the world. He thinks they're the greatest lies ever told. They're so godless. It's sad to see how godless some of these people are. So <clears throat> one world government's coming. Mark of the Beast is coming. Uh, but you know what? The good news is, the sooner we see those things, the sooner we see Christ return and setting it all straight. If you don't know him as Lord and Savior, let me just remind you that you must be born again. John 3, verse 3, Jesus told us. You must be. Romans 10, 9, I think, says it best. It says, if you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Believe in your heart. Hebrews 11, 6 tells us, without faith it's impossible to please God. You think your life is pleasing to God? You need to admit you're a sinner. You need to believe that Jesus was born of a virgin. He is the sinless Son of God who died for the sins of the world. He was buried, he, was, he rose again from the dead, and ask him to forgive you, ask him to cleanse you, ask him to come into your heart and be your Lord, Savior, and King. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, and you shall be saved. It's all coming. But take heart, Christ has already overcome the world. I love you guys, God bless you, good Lord willing, I'll see you again tomorrow.